Okay, I've talked about uh, physical properties where they're properties of matter that we can observe, but one of the things about physical properties is that when you observe them, you cannot change that matter. Uh, if you change the matter, it's a chemical reaction. Now, chemical properties are essentially how does an element or compound act in the presence of other elements or compounds? How does it chemically change? And so the chemical property and chemical uh, reaction are hard to separate from each other because it requires a chemical reaction to describe the chemical property. Now, <clears throat> so how do we know whether a chemical reaction has taken place? There are several different things to uh, look for. One of the most obvious things to look for is if there is a solid formed when you mix two aqueous solutions. You see here I've got two clear aqueous solutions. This is a solution of lead iod or sorry, potassium iodide, and this is a solution of lead nitrate. When I pour these two together, you'll see that a pretty yellow solid is formed. Now, <coughs> that solid is lead iodide. We, it, we have a chemical change that has taken place. Instead of having lead nitrate and potassium iodide in our test tubes, in this test tube we now have lead iodide. A property of lead nitrate is that in the presence of potassium iodide, lead iodide will precipitate out. Another property or another thing that we look for is that when we have two different uh, or a reaction takes place, uh, we look for a temperature change. In this case I have a thermometer. I don't know if you're able to see that, but it says 22.8 degrees Celsius. Now in this test tube I have sodium hydroxide, 3 molar. It's a measure of concentration. In this test tube I have 3 molar hydrochloric acid. Now if I take these two test tubes and I pour the acid in with the base, Visually, it looks like nothing has happened. I don't have any solid formed. It doesn't look like anything's happening inside the test tube. But if I look at the temperature now, my temperature has gone up to 33.8. It's actually increasing. And it's on its way up to close to 40 degrees Celsius. Actually, it's stabled out and starting to drop now. So I think the highest it got was around 36 degrees Celsius. So temperature change is evidence that a chemical reaction occurred. In this case, the acid and the base neutralize each other. Uh, in the case of the sodium hydroxide and the hydrochloric acid, I have made water as a product as well as sodium chloride. Now the sodium chloride is aqueous and dissolved in here. I'm not going to do it, but if you were to taste this solution, it would taste salty because of the sodium chloride. Another form of evidence for a chemical reaction had occurring is bubbling. In this beaker, I have a uh, solution of hydrochloric acid again, and I have a small piece of magnesium. If I place this magnesium down into that acid, you can see that it begins to react. And we've, we've got bubbles forming, there's some clouds, steam being formed, and the reaction is fairly quick. That hydrochloric acid was three molar, so it's fairly concentrated. So the magnesium is going to react with that. A property, a chemical property of magnesium, is that it reacts with acid, or the hydrogen chloride, to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. And that's the bubbling that you saw, hydrogen gas. There are other uh, things to look for during a chemical reaction. One of them is a color, or I'm sorry, light being given off. If I were to take a piece of paper and burn it, or a candle burning, those all give off light in our chemical reactions. The other thing about a chemical reaction is that you do not have the same material after the reaction has taken place that you have before the reaction has taken place. And all of these are beginning compounds or elements changed into other compounds or elements. 
and those are chemical reactions. The chemical properties are how those elements or compounds interacted with the other elements or compounds.